Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. You know, I bought the Wii Tracker 1110 dev board right, right first thing when it came out. And I never really developed a use case for it, but then I see that now it's compatible with Meshtastic. So I already had the Wii board, but I went ahead and got the display and the GPS module. And we're going to follow this getting started with Meshtastic uh, article. First of all, this is a Nordic chip, and you see the Seed Wio WM1110 tracker is down there in that category. We've got to assemble the display and the GPS unit. It already had a GNS S unit, and the LoRa's built in. So let's go ahead and, yeah, that's the Wio tracker 1110. That's the GPS Air 530. And then there's the 0.96 inch OLED display, and those are all Grove connectors. All right, let's go ahead and, yeah, here's the Wio 1110 board. Let's take a look at the Grove connectors here. Yeah, get a close up there. Yeah, so if you get your hand out of the way, you can see the first one on the left, there's I to C. Then there's the serial, the UART, and a digital Grove adapter. And these are all, oh, those are all digital. And that was analog on the other side. Okay, USB-C and the battery connector. And then on here, what am I looking for? Okay. Yeah, yeah, the battery polarity. Positives on the left, negatives on the right. And then up here, there's a LoRa connector and a connector for the GNSS that's already on board. Apparently, it's not compatible with Meshtastic, so you have to get the Air 530 GPS unit. But this is going to be pretty fun. I've, I've, like I said, I've had this on the, on the desk for a while, and I haven't developed a use case, and I'm really enjoying my time working with Meshtastic, and I think that this is going to be an especially interesting situation here. Let's take a look at the back here. Yeah, I didn't follow the QR code. <laughs> okay, so first goes the display, and that's going in the I to C Grove connector. The cables are really long. Those Grove cables are really long, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. And then the GPS goes in the serial Grove connector there, the UART. And I've already attached the antenna to the GPS module. Okay. So if things go if things go as planned, it should be pretty simple. But then, you know, from watching stuff on my channel, it isn't always as simple as you might think. Okay, so down here under resources, this is cool. There's the 3D print enclosure. Uh, we're actually going to handle the case in another video. Yeah, so I've already downloaded the STP file. Okay, so I wrapped the cables around it so that it would be a little more compact on the desk. And now, after getting started with the Meshtastic kit, we want to figure out how to flash Meshtastic on there. Yeah, there we go. Flash the firmware. So if you double click the reset button, it should say WM1110 boot. But since my unit was one of the original ones, the firmware doesn't have that on there. So if you buy the one specifically for Meshtastic off of the seed site, you just double click the reset button and it's going to show that WM1110 boot. Here it just shows us boot. So I'm going to try to drop the bootloader on there. Let's get our windows arranged. Yeah, I downloaded the bootloader. Drag it over here. And that causes it to reboot. And it goes away. Let's see. So I thought it was doing okay so far. I'm going to go ahead and download the Wio WM1110 tracker firmware for Meshtastic. Let's scroll down here. Continue. 
you know, I push DF, enter DFU mode, and watch it'll pop up. Waiting for it. Oh, there it is. No. Oh, it didn't work at all. <laughs> I was expecting to be able to push enter DFU mode and that it would pop up, but it's not going to. So I'm going to have to press the reset button twice. Okay, so I pushed the reset button twice, and you see it doesn't say WM1110 boot. It just says boot. So I don't think the bootloader dragging and dropping it worked. And we'll see again here. I'm going to go ahead and download that firmware file, the UF2 file. Seems like all the Nordic devices, you copy a UF2 file onto the device after it's in DFU mode. Okay, get that open in Windows Explorer. We'll set that over there. And set the boot on this side. If you look carefully, it seems like it exits before it copies all the way. And I didn't really notice that at the time. This can take a few seconds. Let's wait it out. Now watch the progress indicator and listen to the gong. Oh. And then it rebooted. But yeah, it never it never came up with the Meshtastic logo or anything like that. So I can pretty much conclude that at least the early on board that I got the firmware doesn't let me just do the UF2 instructions. I'm going to have to use the serial instructions. And of course, I ignore the fact that there's a different <laughs> bootloader download there. But you need to have Python installed. So I installed Python 3.1.2 from Microsoft Store. And that includes PIP3. So you need Python and PIP3. Python 3, PIP3. And we've confirmed the versions here. They are installed. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty new to Python, and so don't launch the Python terminal. You just launch Python commands from PowerShell or Command Prompt. So pip3 install user Adafruit NRF util. Okay, it's downloading the NRF util, installing the build dependencies. Getting the requirements, downloading more stuff, installing the collected packages. So it says the actual the actual path of the script Adafruit NRF util exe is installed at C users Jeff app data roaming etc etc. Oh, it's not on path. Huh. Uh, yeah, so it's not in that path. It went somewhere else. So I had to scramble around looking for it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see the directory that it's in. Let's find out. So next, we're going to run the Adafruit NRF util to flash the bootloader on here. You see it's bootloader zip, and you have to specify the serial port. It says COMXX. I didn't pick up on that right away. Yeah, so I go to run it. Let's see. Yeah, it can't find it. So then I found the actual path is this app data roaming Python, Python 3.12 script. Yeah, you see I did a directory slash s to find it. There it is. Okay, so now that we know where it is, we can change directory to that and flash the bootloader onto there. This is like early Saturday morning, so I'll make a couple of gaffes here and there. I'm probably not going to cut it out either. you got to kind of laugh along with me. Okay, so we're changing to that directory. All right. Let's run the command again. You see I figured out, oh yeah, COM15. Oh, it can't find the package. Wait, wait. Oh, it was PowerShell. You have to proceed with a dot slash. Right. 
yeah, dot backslash to say it's okay to run. Oh, and now it can't find the, I got to download. It's a zip file, not a UF2. Yeah, you can see the old bootloader was a UF2, but this command, the Adafruit NRF util needs the zip file to d install this. And this is just to get the bootloader on there so that you can go into DFU mode so that you can flash the Meshtastic image. Okay, and I'm going to copy that zip file and put it in the same path as the Adafruit NRF util exe so it knows where it is. Okay, I think we're going to get it this time. Yeah, that's the correct zip file name. Yeah, sometimes I like to just rush ahead and do things and I miss out on some important detail like having the right file. Okay, it's working. We're sending the firmware file. Okay, activating new firmware. Let's see. Yeah, hey, hey, there it is. There is the WM1110 boot. So that tells me I'm in DFU mode and flashing with Meshtastic is going to succeed. Let's see what we do next. Yeah, so we just download the firmware and then drag it over and drop it on the WM1110 boot. So, yeah, just once again for review, it's down here under Nordic, the Seed Wio WM1110 tracker. This is what you would see. Oh, the new 2.5 version is alpha now. Go ahead and scroll down to here. Hit continue. We're already in DFU mode. I don't need to click it because it says WM1110 boot. So I'm just going to download the UF2 file. I want to make sure I have the latest one anyway, so I don't know <laughs> if it's the same one I tried before or not. Okay, let's get that open in the folder. Drag that to one side. There we go, there's a WM1110 boot. Drag it, drop it. Now you occasionally will get an error saying the device disconnected, but you can ignore it, apparently. Let's see, okay, it didn't show me that. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and connect up to this. It's already on the USB port, so we're just gonna go ahead and connect via serial. This is looking very positive now. Meshtastic's running on the Wio 1110 tracker. I like to rename all my devices so my Mesh friends in Tucson, Arizona recognize my devices as different from theirs. So we'll call it Shotoku and leave the 8348 in there. Oh, okay, I'll even put the device name in, it, in there. What the heck? Wio 1110. Now, of course, you know, the first thing we need to do is set the region under LoRa. We also, here in Tucson, we have a hop count of seven right now. Channel utilization is usually under 30%, so it's not a problem. Also, I found that I had to go into position and enable GPS mode. I didn't change any of the other settings, I just set it to enable, because when I first turned it on, it said no GPS. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and send this. Let's reconnect. Good. We see the rename came through. We're starting to see some nodes come in. I just want to pop a test message on the uh, primary channel. <laughs> Nothing on the map yet, so I haven't picked up anybody's GPS coordinates. Yeah, I still don't see my window uh, unit here. 2088 is my window unit, and it gets me all the way to Mount Lemmon, 16 miles away with just the 1.7 uh, 175 millimeter antenna test wheel tracker 1110 okay my window unit got it that's 2088 got it so gotcha i'm going to go ahead and reply wait for the check mark okay message received and in it comes Okay, so now I want to check out the GPS functionality. 
Yeah, so we're out here at Jesse Owens Park in Tucson, Arizona. I want to test out the GPS functionality without doxing myself. So, here goes. It's good to get out and touch some grass. And you see here I got this laying out on the branch of a tree there at Jesse Owens Park. You can look up those coordinates. Perfectly harmless. I'm connected to the radio. Let's check our coordinates on the map. That's the Google map. And that looks pretty accurate. Let's check the Meshtastic map. I like the Meshtastic map better. It's a lot more detailed. Yeah, so you can see all the nodes in Tucson. There we go, 8348 right there in that little patch of green. Look for the link down below to the product page and the getting started page. Give this video a like, leave a comment down below, and before you go check out my Meshtastic playlist, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.